Oh no. So the Middlebury game was the NESCAC final. I think it was an 11 a.m. game, which is a little earlier than we're used to because during the season, usually Saturdays, we're at 2.30 for us. Uh, so we all woke up pretty early. <laughs> Went to DeWick, um, and there's kind of this tradition that no one really knows where it originated, but Apple Fork is the game that we play. The Apple Fork tradition. So Apple Fork, yeah, we've been playing since since at least our freshman year. Apple Fork is basically something that was started, I, I, I think, I, I don't know when it was started. Since at least our freshman year, it's a big tradition we'll play. Uh, before every game in the dining hall. Starts out, all the guys get their forks, we start banging them on the table obnoxiously. You hear the table just vibrating under you, and everyone's bashing their forks into the table. Um, initially, the first time we played that game, it was I was super confused. One person that starts an, a fork into an apple. And essentially, after that, we just try to keep on tossing the apple with the fork to another person who catches it with a fork. So the apple sticks onto it. Come on, guys. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Can you see that from there? Hey! hey. All right, that's, that's, good good that's a good start. Oh, okay. Yo, that's ambitious. Oh, that's ambitious. Oh, 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 Usually we get a good streak of like four or five going, so it gets the boys going. The more forks we get, the better we're going to do, so just you keep tossing until someone drops it. Whoever drops it is, everyone obviously makes fun of them. I remember the first time I, I was actually involved in Apple Fork, I was pretty close, I was really, really nervous. I was actually shaking because I didn't want to get yelled at by everybody. Make sure you get the height on the cost, Herb. Herb, go back! No, that's not I know what to do, It gets everybody hyped, it gets everybody buzzing a little bit, um, and so that's kind of a really good way to start the morning. It's kind of superstitious um, on our team. If we have a bad apple fork, everyone, everyone's like, oh, we're going to have a bad game. We normally don't when that happens, but it's just it's normally just good old fun. Most of the people around the dining hall will be looking at us like, I don't really understand, but we all understand. Some people can handle success. I can! <laughs> the thing is, DJ Cal cannot handle success. Dude, you think Celebrate success, right? Apple, Syrah, the only way. <laughs> you think pretty damn out really here, right? You, you think it's out from the beach right now? He bought these bamboo trees, yeah, just goes, like, you see that bamboo, right? You Lion! see that bamboo. <laughs> Ain't nothing like bamboo. <laughs> Lion! Right after Team DeWick, after Apple Fork, we usually, um, some guys go back to the house for a little bit and decompress, get their minds right, and some guys go straight to the locker room. Neither one of their wingers want to defend. The biggest thing for Middlebury, the biggest thing we're concerned about, was to not take them too lightly, um, since we played so well the first time and won pretty convincingly. But we knew that wasn't going to be the case this time. Since the last game, they'd gone on a big run of 1-0 victories. Uh, we knew it was going to be a battle. So the biggest thing was getting the guys to dial in right from the moment they woke up. Um, but also to keep it light, because that's how we play. We've got some capable individuals, with the seven being the, the most capable, all right? Coach really emphasized the fact that the team that we played about a month before, they were going to be completely different. He's going to shift and drop, he's going to roll and dice, but he want, he'll ticky tack, but he wants to come inside. I think we felt pretty confident coming off a good win against Hamilton. We had just won 4 nothing, and when you win 4 nothing, it allows you to rest potential guys. We knew it was going to be a test, I mean, to beat Bowdoin, which is a team I haven't beat in my four years still, um, in, in the semifinals. We knew, it, we knew it was a tough team, and going into the game, like, a lot was on us.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bellow Field on the campus of Tufts University for today's NESCAC Men's Soccer Championship matchup between the Middlebury Panthers and the Tufts Jumbos. Zero, Connor Meath. Go, Profanity, racial, sexist, homophobic, or other derogatory comments or other intimidating actions directed at officials, spectators, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated. Keep it all out there, have each other's backs, enjoy it, play the game at a f***ing high speed. Let's go. Come on, go, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. This is our game, boys. This is our game. Hey, yesterday it was Kevin. Who's it going to be today? Today we play as a family. That's what we've been all year. That's what we're doing today. Hey, family on three, one, two, three. Family. Family. We started the game pretty rocky, like the first 20 minutes they were kind of all over us. They were one of the first teams to really come out of the gates hard against us and press us all around the field. They were compact and, you know, halfway through the game everyone felt like it was a very even game. Half time! <laughs> You know Z, how break this down. Z, break this down. See, I'm on three. One, two, three! First time we played them, we were able to connect well um, forward into the attacking center mid. And I think we found that in the second half, especially when they were starting to tire, because not as many teams uh, have the depth that we do, so not as many teams can press for a whole game. Uh, and I think it started to show later in the match uh, as we started to impose. Um, we switched into a 3-5-2. Um, so me and Brett o Rojas were up there. I think our depth really wore on them as the game went on. They'd gone to OT the day before and we'd had a pretty convincing result. And we're a pretty deep team to start with. So the last 20 minutes, we were really all over them. The field started to slant towards their goal. We settled into the game. We got the ball under control. And then we kind of took it to them a little bit. And luckily, Rojas finally broke through. Finally, I think it was the 88th minute, something crazy like that, uh, out of nowhere. We had a good play all the way from the back and Dex found Zach Lane's feet out wide, and Lane played an amazing ball. We kind of bent it around the inside center back uh, to me and Brett. We're both there. Don't know who hit it exactly. Tough goal scored by number 10, Brett Rojas. I think it might have went directly off of Brett's head in the goal, um, but I was there. When I saw Brett Rojas head a ball, it was honestly one of the first three times I've ever seen him do it, so I couldn't tell if I was more excited about that or us actually scoring. But obviously us actually scoring had, a, had an impact. Coach has a complicated relationship with sideline celebrations. Also going back to my freshman year, I remember there was in a time uh, I had my first college assist and I ran over to go celebrate with my friend Dexter Eichhorst who ran onto the field out of pure excitement, at which point coach almost Ray lewis him. So... <laughs> Sorry, that was f***ing gold. <laughs> um, so this year, uh, I know everyone's seen about Kevin and the, the meat he delivers to Travis. Well, coach took the meat to a triple level when he ran onto the field to celebrate Rojas' goal and absolutely just annihilated Travi and sent him flying back onto the sideline. Coach absolutely bodied TVB with no remorse. Literally just full on body slam TVB. <laughs> TVB, as you know, um, usually can't handle a little bit of force. TVB flew back. I think Coach apologized afterwards. Um, but yeah, that was pretty funny. Tough goal scored by number 10, Brett Rojas, assisted by number 17, Zach Lane. We kind of knew at that point, 88th minute, we were able to get a G that we could see it out two minutes left, so um, it was an amazing feeling. Three, two, one. It was a pretty unreal feeling. It was awesome. It really was. Because, um, I mean, being a senior, you, you want to leave a legacy. Um, you want to leave something behind, and preferably something that hasn't been done before. Uh, so to, to get that first next CAC championship for our program, a tournament in which our program has historically struggled, was huge. The senior class was incredibly happy about it, and all the younger guys could kind of see just from the looks in our faces how much it meant to us. Now the 2017 <laughs> NESCAC yeah. champions. Except they can change. Championship award for Coach Shapiro and the Jumbos, our team captains, Connor Coleman and Sterling Weatherby. Let's go, White! Let's go, White! Come on, Coach. Yeah. 
give one more round. Yeah. That was kind of the last thing that we needed to accomplish, and like it felt really good, like getting that monkey off our back, getting 500 in NESCAC play. We're three and three now in the NESCAC tournament. We don't have a losing record. And more, more importantly, we brought something to Tufts that no other class has been able to bring to Tufts, and like we just kind of added to our legacy a little bit. And like there was talk about not touching the NESCAC trophy after we won it because like the Stanley Cup, like you don't touch the conference finals before before the national championship trophy but no that's something we i think all of us worked so hard for i'm really glad i got to be a part of it and i'm just so happy for all the guys on the team especially the ones ne uh, next year to get to go defend that uh defend the title i think the nescac championship it was kind of the whole experience was very different than anything that we've we've ever been a part of and being able to host the whole entire thing at home and play in front of our fans. Um, it was just an amazing experience and being able to go from never winning a game before um, in the, our past three years to finally having that culmination of senior year, um, being able to take home the trophy. It was just kind of a full circle, like this is what we've been waiting to do and this is what we've been working so hard for, for four years for. Speech. Hey. Speech. 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 Uh, I'm very proud of the resolve and how you, you grew into it, right? You never commit, you, you imposed eventually, you found your way, and it was a big time goal, right? And, and it, it, it was a total downhill field the last 15 minutes. That's what our depth, that's what our quality is gonna do to people all the time. We're, we're gonna look at a lot of games like that going forward, guys. It's gonna be harder, it's gonna be tighter, we've gotta believe, we've gotta pick each other up, and keep going and be relentless, right? It's a big, when does Brett Ross go to his head? <laughs> Zach Lane, big time running. Everybody who steps on the field. When does Lane run ever? <laughs> brought something, brought quality to it. Very proud of you. That's one, right? We've got six more. Let's go. Boys, one more time. Meet on three. One, two, three. Meet. Let's go. Guys, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get it out there. But we'll go selection show tomorrow at one. Woo. Tomorrow's off. Tuesday's off. In all seriousness, it was a huge goal for our team. We wanted to be the first senior class to to lead. Tufts to a NESCAC championship, so to be able to do that, especially at home in front of a great crowd, was really satisfying and a great accomplishment for the program. Paul Rick's trying to sign it. Make a show to try to sign it. Hey! Yeah. <laughs>